To stay informed, love the programming. A fantastic team of business reporters and journalists that go beyond what's expected. BNN, for simply outstanding coverage. Well, originally, uh, Nokia Siemens was the, the front runner, I suppose you might say. Research in motion, the dark horse. Uh, but the come from behind victory went to Ericsson for the latest uh, on the auction of Nortel assets. Paul Bagnell and I are joined by John Arnold, independent telecom consultant with Jay Arnold and Associates. Good to see you. Good morning. Morning. Uh, did um, did any of this uh, this whole auction process? Did any of it surprise you at all? Did these uh, evaluate the players for it. Sure. Well, it's 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 what everybody's talking about, and of course, the Nortel story for Canada is such a big focus. There's nothing else you want to think about right now. Um, at the end of the day, uh, I do think Ericsson is the best uh, suitor for this deal. Um, I, I need to stress right away, though, you know, there are really two separate Nortel stories. There's others, too, but this is the wireless piece, which gets everybody's attention. But interestingly, their history has always been built around telecom equipment, which is what we use here on the phones. Sure. on our desks and that's a whole other sale process that's going through right now uh, right now Nokia looks to be the acquirer of that piece of the business but that's a different deal altogether uh, but really in the end of the day the, the whole issue as, as you've been mentioning earlier Paul is about the LTE transition this move to 4G which really takes the whole mobile experience into a whole other league and if, you're, if your standard is North America we've we've got a long way to go we can live with what we have today but if you go to, to Asia especially in Southeast Asia where they're used to this kind of 50 100 megabit kind of service everyone has it uh, they, 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 they laugh at what we have here we're so far behind and so LTE is really moving to the global standard and what's happening is with with the wireless space the evolution of these standards going from 2, 3, 4G and now to LTE we're finally at a point where we have a, a global standard that everyone can agree on and when you think about it long term that standard it really should be set by the vendors who are in this business if this went to RIM or a proprietary vendor it's much like CDMA with Qualcomm if you have one vendor controlling the majority of the patents, it really does create an unlevel playing field for the interests of the global community. Ericsson is a global company. Most of their revenues come from Asia and Europe, so they know the landscape. They know what LTE is all about. What, what we don't know, of course, is where some of these LTE patents are going to ultimately end up, because mm -hmm. apparently they're not all on the table, and that raises all kinds of questions. Will there be another play here? Will there be another new Nortel coming out of the ashes with the best of the patents? It's very similar similar actually to what's going on with, with Skype. Uh, there's a big issue with Skype and eBay right now about some of the, 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 the strongest patents were held behind when eBay acquired Skype by Nicholas and Giannis, the founders. Similar issue here. All of a sudden now it's become a huge issue of contention about, and that will determine where Skype ends up in eBay, outside of eBay. Here's another question too. It sounds like there's enough patents though that, that it makes it worthwhile for Ericsson, that they'll get that intellectual property and really be able to globalize the, the whole LTE standard and they can move it forward to the broader market probably faster and better than anybody. So I, I'd have to say, when you think about it, you know, Ericsson is like the Nortel of Canada. It's really the pride and joy of Sweden in terms of R&D and telecom legacy and expertise. So if Nortel were to say, you know, who's probably the best successor to this, if you're thinking globally, Sure, I, I would have to say it's Ericsson. How good a <coughs> how good a strategic fit would these assets have been for Research in Motion? You you take a dim view from, from another point of view of of, of, a, of a vendor like uh, Research in Motion acquiring these uh, patents. But if you look at it from Rim's point of view, how valuable, how useful would, the, would these patents have been? Well, it would just be fantastic because it would give them that kind of leg up. And, and you know, there, there's this battle between you know the iPhone and the BlackBerry, and you know the BlackBerry is about BlackBerry but RIM is really trying to emerge as a consumer player whereas Apple of course is trying to emerge as a business player mm -hmm. and for them to really go to that extra mile sure that 4G license set would have been a really great asset for them to have but uh, I don't really as you said earlier I don't really see that happening either it's just like with the Coyotes bid he's coming in late to the game you know it's a little bit like TELUS remember when Bell was on the table early on they came in last minute well we'll be the Canadian savior keep this company going in Canada but again it's it's a strategic ploy but it's too little to too late. Is the, are the assets that are being bought, now you, you've said that there are some assets being left behind uh, in, the, in the old Nortel, who are they going to be attractive for? Well, this is really interesting because, we, you know, this is all inside stuff and I, I don't really know either, but, you know, there could very well be a team within the Nortel group that says, you know what, this is kind of the, these are the best patents out there 
that we could build another business around. And there may well be a, a case for them to keep those and then spin out another company. Maybe it will be a competitor to Ericsson, although I doubt it. Uh, but it could be the remnants of maybe the core Nortel team that doesn't stay and goes on and moves, moves to another direction, focuses on different market. You know, there's a huge uh, area of the, of the MVNOs, the, you know, the, the, the virtual carriers, just like Virgin, for example, that come in and go on the backs of other carriers networks and offer niche services. Well, MVNOs are all over the world and what does that stand for? Yeah, MVNO means a mobile virtual network operator. So it's a bit like Vonage offering telephony, your VoIP service in your home. They don't run a network, they offer it over other people's networks. And MVNOs are another frontier of growth and for that segment of the market, they'd be more than happy to license LTE patents and give them equal footing to get in the game and just then at that point it's a question of not technology but marketing and and innovation on your end user markets that you Brief, focus and on. briefly what are <coughs> some of the other major Nortel assets that are, are going to be auctioned off as this process continues well I think you know the, the wireless is is kind of a settled standalone piece the other side is, is is the wireline business is the telephony so all the PBX's that Nortel's history has been built around that whole business is is up for grabs now and it's looking very much you know I think Siemens is uh, Nokia Siemens bid was, I think, $475 million. And how good are those assets uh, Very good. globally? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, well, North, Nortel has always been, you know, the North American, them and Verizon, not Verizon, I'm sorry, you know, Avaya, which used to be out of AT&T Labs. Mm. They were the prime vendors here in North America. Not so much outside of North America, but here they are the main story. So they have a great uh, product set. They have a great customer base, but a very nervous clientele out there wondering are you going to be around so a lot of decisions to buy their technology have been on hold for a while now so if, if a strong suitor comes in that's a complementary fit it's much easier for those customers to stay with Nortel or whoever the successor company will be hmm. but that's Great. that's important stuff there's other businesses too by the way but those are the two big ones right now interesting story we appreciate you bringing in the background sure thanks Thank very you. much you're very welcome our guest has been John Arnold independent telecom consultant at J Arnold and Associates and Paul that's uh, that brings a whole different story I have not heard uh, anybody make that case that uh, long term the uh, Ericsson could be uh, could be just what what this yeah and the Nortel story wants. the Nortel auction story not over yet uh, obviously we'll yeah. see more of this as the summer wears on excellent thanks Paul up next U.S. Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke is making his rounds on the public.